Hello everybody, welcome. So today, on this episode, we're going to show you all how to extend a list of possible entries for certain fields in SAP. I actually need to minimize this. So let's look at an example of one such field. I'll show you how I go about doing this. And hopefully this will kind of help you for additional fields to an SAP. Sometimes we can do it this way, sometimes it's not an option, but in this case, let's say we're in transaction SU01, which is change user or user maintenance. I'm going to use my username, developer. Click on change. So let's find us a drop down field. Um, so communication method. So if we look here, we have all these different methods. So page or SMS, post, letter, internet, sales, call, all these different things. So maybe I have a different message, right? Maybe I want to say that this user's communication method is, oh, I don't know, what do we have? Let's say intercompany mail, right? So first of all, I need to know what this field is. So I'm going to highlight this field, click F1 for the F1 help. Um, it's going to show me some basic information about this field. What I'm going to do is going to click this uh, technical information, which is going to give us some more advanced information. We can see here that this field type actually comes from a structure in the ABAP data dictionary. The field name is DEFLT underscore COMM. That's the default communication method. And if we double click on this data element, AD underscore COMM, and these will all be a little different, but this just shows you kind of, you know, what to look for for this one. So we see that this data element is getting its type information. You know, we get field label here. That's about all we get for this data element. But it's getting its information for data type, lookup, all that stuff from this domain called AD underscore COMM. So to view a domain, we could go to SE11 and look that domain up. Or using forward navigation while we're in this display data element, we could double click our domain right here. It's going to take us to the dictionary display domain. And so we see it is a character string of link three. We can look at properties, what package it's in, original language, last changed, all that stuff. But if we come right here to where it says value range, we can see that we could either have a fixed value range of single values, intervals, this would be like for a uh, let's say a document number, it might start with a 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way to 1, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. But in this case, we see down here we have a table, which is a value table, T-S-A-C. So we can do one of two things here to look at this value table. We can double click on it to look at it in the data dictionary, or we can go to transaction SE11 and enter T-S-A-C. I'll just double click on it for the purposes of this video. And it's going to take me to the data dictionary, SE11, and it displays all of the different communication methods, business address services, communication methods. We can look at display contents here, and we can see what we've seen before in our, uh, in our drop down. I'll just leave the selection screen blank and click execute. So we see all of our values. Let me pull up another session and go back to SU01, go back into change user. Oh, I'm, I'm locked, so I'll just do another user. Say DDIC, go into change user. No company is assigned. Let's go ahead and assign a company. Let's just do this false one that I've made. So um, in the communication tab, we see this method here. And we can notice that all of our options are coming from this communication text. This is the domain that is pulling from this table, TSAC, as a lookup table. So now, a neat thing we can do is in uh, some cases, actually we'll just get rid of this session. In some cases, we can maintain these tables and add additional custom values. So with table TSAC, Let's go to transaction SM30. SM30 allows us to uh, modify entries in a table if there's a view maintenance uh, dialog associated with it. So we'll go to transaction SM30. 
an inner table TSAC. And now come down here and say maintain. So now we're going to get a warning the table is cross client. So that means every client uses the same table, so don't do anything too screwy. We can wait for this to compile for just a second. So now we see all of our different entries that we saw in our drop down. So now let's say that there's a different communication method that we want to use in a custom ABOT program, something like that, or maybe just something we want to query based on. So we can say, let's create a new communication method, communication type, and there's a couple of flags here. So DB tab plus maintenance function exists. We'll leave that uh, initial flag used. So if it's going to be used as a communication type, we need to check this box. And document exchange, and I don't even know what that is to be honest. So let's just go ahead and create a new one just to demonstrate this. Let's call it ZTST. Oh, can't get that long. Let's just call it ZT, communication type. Let's say inner company mail. And in parentheses, test. Well, can't do that either. Let's just say IC mail test. Go ahead and do this use flag and we'll go ahead and save our new communication method it's going to prompt us for a transport request so we could create a new transport request I'll say add new default com method in table to what was it TSAC TSCA oh I don't know it's 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 not gonna to go to an actual productive system so we'll just say whatever um, the table itself was TSAC so now we see our entry has been saved in table TSAC. We can go back to SU01, go back to my username, go to maintain this, and in our method here, we should see IC mail test, which is the um, communication method we've just created by extending our TSAC table. So there is a. Uh, we should be able to actually see these uh, codes here. I think I can go into options, interaction design. It's one of these visualizations. Show keys within drop down lists. And I believe I might actually have to create a new session. So let's just do that and go into SU01 again. Developer. Go to change method. So now we do see our actual um, keys right here beside our method that we created. So we see ZT, which is our Z test. I see mail test, and we can save this. So user developer has changed. Go into the display, and now we can see our new custom addition to this lookup field. So that is how you change or add. Uh, certain values. Maybe we have Mr. or Mrs. here in title. We could actually look at this. There may or may not be a way to extend this field. Again, it's kind of different for every field. We'll go to technical information. You see it's title underscore MEDI. The data element is AD underscore title TX. So we'll double click on our data element. We'll go to, well, the domain is text 30. So it might not actually be restricted. Let's see here default component name, title field label. Let's go to text 30. We see there's no sort of uh, value range here. So that's probably set by the application itself, that uh, custom program that is uh, SU01. Let's see if there was anything else we could extend just in here. Let's say language. Oh, I'm not going to mess with language. Logon data. User type. I'm pretty sure SAP doesn't allow us to add to this, but we can check just to see. So data element, double click on our data element, double click on our domain, look at the value range. So we'd actually probably have to change this, which is going to require object registration in the SAP support portal. So that's an example where we can't actually um, make any changes here without registering the object and changing the SAP standard program. So that's another example. You know, we, we could do that if we absolutely must. But we should typically try to avoid having to register objects and changing SAP built-ins. Let's see here. Decimal notation, time zone. 
just trying to see if there's anything else in this one particular transaction that we can modify. Maybe personalization, no. Nope. License, 99% sure we can't modify this field, but let's just take a look at it. User type EN, data element, user type, value range, there is a value table, so we can double click on it. We can see our table. If we list our contents of this TUTYPA table, we should be able to see all the different user types. And we see, of course, here the different user types. So chances are this is not going to be something we can extend, but let's just do it for fun. Let's change the transaction SM30. Enter that table name. Click on Maintain. And we see there is no maintenance dialog for that table. So that ends up being one of the fields that we can't actually extend. But, you know, check these guys out. Check these different fields. See if there is an extendable data element because this will allow you to add custom values here to which a user can pick. Again, just go to um, F1 while you're on the field. Go to the technical information. Look at your data element. Double click on your data element. See if it's associated with a particular domain. Double click on your domain. Look at the value range. See if there's a value table. If there is, copy the value table. Go to transaction SM30. Paste the value table name in. And go to maintain. So you can add a different let's just say Z5 another test we'll just put this use flag on I uh, use the same transport request now go back to transaction SU01 go into my username developer we see another one here Z5 another test so that's an example of how we can extend these different values in different SAP programs so if you guys have any questions about this or uh, Anything you want to add or want me to follow up with in another video, please leave a comment, leave me an email, something like that. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, give me a subscribe if you found this video really helpful, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.